Well, I'm Sasha Steinhorst, 46 years young, skateboarder my whole life. Um, yeah, just eat, live, and breathe skateboarding. When did you uh, first ask about your skateboarding? Back in the late 70s. Um, I want to say like 77-ish, 76-ish, yeah. Um, rode on a California Freeformer, little plastic, blue blue piece of plastic, you know, that I bought at a Woolies, actually, at Woolworth. My mom bought it for me. Um, and yeah, I kind of never, I was bit and never turned back. I've had a lot of other, you know, things in my life that I've done, but I've always, you know, I seem to always fall back on the skateboard, you know. I noticed um, that you do a lot of bike riding, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do a lot of mountain biking, road biking as well. Just because, uh, you know, at 46, I don't bounce like the the teenagers, you know. So skateboarding's pretty high impact. So I enjoy a lot of that. I, I road race motorcycles too. So uh, I'm I'm type A. You know what I mean? I I like the thrill. I like the speed. I like the rush. So uh, I think you know once you once you have that addiction, it's a hard addiction to get rid of. But I also find that you're pretty mellow, laid out, um, down earth guy, you're not somebody, you're not pretentious, like some in your position could be. Yeah, yeah I, thank you for saying that, I, I, you know, I don't know, I just, I guess my mother always just taught me to be level headed, you know, kind of take the highs and the lows and pull the string tight so everything's medium, you know, everything in moderation and just, yeah, treat people like you want to be treated, you know, it's a really important concept that I've grown up with that, uh, you're as good as the people around you, you know. So if you take care of the people around you, they'll take care of you. Yep, great philosophy. Yeah. Well, Your mother taught you that? She's one. She's, <laughs> she's one. I've had many mentors in my life, you know. I've had many mentors, but uh, yeah, you know, it seems like mom's kind of always set me straight, you know, when I was getting off kilter. Mm -hmm. She just sort of, you know, pulled me back and, you know, didn't lay down the law. She just put it to me in, in a way that you get it. You either get it or you don't in life. You know what I mean? People walk it. People live life through different frequencies and you know either you either get it or you don't. You know? There's no half getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well that's uh, that brings us back to skateboarding. You know, you either get it or you don't. You either, yeah. You're either willing to take the tough falls and breaking bones or you're just not. Yeah. Yeah. And you know and it's not a question of if. Especially on the physical end of it. You know what I mean? Not even the work industry that whole side of it. You know but just you know it's not it's not a question of if it's a question of when it's going to happen and then how you deal with it you know and uh yeah how you deal with it's actually one of the most important things so how does sasha sign horse deal with it well i mean physically dude, i've had quite a few ailments you know broken wrist uh fractured ankles fractured ribs uh uh, just here last year, I 50-50'd I and flipped over into the flat bottom and separated my shoulder for the second time in eight months. So this whole last year has been a long physical process. I didn't want to get an operation. I just wanted to, you know, go through the physical therapy and try to make it work that way. So it's it's been hard, you know, at 46, like I said, you don't heal like the kids anymore. So something that, will, you know, would have taken two, three weeks, a month to heal from takes six, seven months, a year. You know, so it's frustrating, you know, because you want to go out there and you want to, quote, perform or, but, yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it, I know it, what you're saying. It, I mean, I'm, I'm turning 40 this year, um, just before Christmas, or about a month and a half before Christmas, I um, separated my AC joint from my shoulder. Yeah. And that's still getting pain coming down. Everywhere. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's everything's attached. So it transcends through your whole your whole body. Yeah. You know what I mean. It's getting better. I mean, after four weeks, I was able to look Thomas again. But um, but yes, yeah, still after all this time. You yeah. Know, and, that, and that's the first time I've sort of really inched myself badly um, skateboarding in years. I mean, I stopped skateboarding for 20 odd years right. before I came back to it. Yeah. Um, you know, and then to to have children and somebody who I I really I really have to care for. Do everything for and then not being able to do that but wipe off work and sort of put another spin around sure. what I'm doing, you know? Sure, sure. Well the older we get we have more responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So tell me how about uh, about yourself and how you manage those injuries and Well, I mean Again, a lot of it is how you just mentally deal with it, you know what I mean? The physical is the physical, you, you know, that it's going to either heal or it doesn't, and 
you know, you can eat healthy, you can, you know, exercise, you can keep your, your, your physical being healthy, but a lot of it is keeping your mental being healthy, your spiritual being healthy, you know what I mean? Everything has to be in homeostasis. It can't be one or the other or the other. That's a triangle. It all has to be tight, you know what I mean? Mental, physical, spiritual, it's all one and the same, you know? So balance is the key. Balance is the key, yeah. It's like skateboarding. It's just like skateboarding, that's it, man. <laughs> you're off kilter, you're on the ground. <laughs> that's right. And we don't like to be on the ground. We like to keep it on our wheels and off the hips, so to speak. Yeah. Um... Well, that sort of makes me think of, uh, of the industry itself. I mean, uh, I've got a part of the script where, where I say that uh, the industry is known to be a, um, an unbalanced creature, you know, but yet balance is integrity, integrity critical of what the skateboarder does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the industry's a tough one, you know what I mean? I, I, I mean, I've been doing this for 30 plus years, being involved in the industry, and um, I've seen a lot of people and companies and ideas come and go. Um, I've seen corporate sponsorship come and go. Uh, you know, skateboarding's mainstream now. You know, when we started skateboarding, we were rebels. You know, we, we, we really were rebels, you know. When, when we had the sticker that said skateboarding is not a crime, we were criminals. You know, when I grew up in San Francisco, you know, pre-street days, mm -hmm. before street really came to be, um, we were criminals. You know, like, we, everywhere you went, you got chased. That's just how it was, you know. And now, uh, you know, skateboarding's mainstream. You know, more kids in America ride a skateboard then play baseball or quote national sport, mm -hmm. and that's just the demographics, mm -hmm. you know. So society's changing, society's evolving, you know. Um, it's not just the old status sport quo, so to speak, you know. Very similar to what I was speaking to Pat about. Um, I've moved in different circles with my filming and photography. Um, I covered VA supercar races and. Um, Want to trade? I <laughs> uh, love a good V8. <laughs> I love a good V8. Bring it. <laughs> well, the thing I was pointing out there was that um, skateboarders aren't so so pretentious. Because we didn't come from anything. You know what I mean? Like most most skaters, especially us older ones, we didn't. Especially me, dude. I didn't come from a rich household or anything like that. You know, like I looked at skateboarding as that was my release. It saved my life. I I didn't. It's different to how it is now, you know, but when I was a kid, it really wasn't a sport, you know. I, I still look at skateboarding as an art form, you know, and, and the skaters, skaters the artists, the board is the brush, the urban environment, whether it's a bowl, a park, the street, a ledge, skating downhill through some cones, whatever, that's your urban environment to paint your own picture, your own interpretation. You know, there aren't, there's not really any rules in skateboarding. The only really rule to me is the fundamental of the push. You know, Mongol is the only, pushing Mongol is the only broken rule in, in, in skating, you know. But other than that, once you have the foundation of learning how to push properly, there are no rules. You know, it's your own picture, it's your own interpretation. So. You know, every day when you're skating, you've got a Monet, a Rembrandt, a Picasso. They all interpret it in a different way. And, none of, and nothing's bad, nothing's wrong. It's just different. Some days, one painting is more beautiful than another to you, you know, because people have moods and people people's concepts of what's, you know, beautiful may change from day to day. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, saying that, uh, you know, some days a trick that felt great and rad and, and, and it, it fulfilled you, the next day might not feel the same. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the one day the 5.0 feels great, the next day it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? So then you move on to something else. Move on to something that makes you feel good. You know, because at the end of the day we skateboard because we want to feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, where now I think that's a lot of it's changed in the last kind of 20 years that it has come to competition. It has come to who's the best, you know, who's got the most sponsors, the most money, you know, and a lot of that has to do with the corporate money coming into it, y you know, and it's almost like the necessary evil, you know, you have to make friends with the devil at some point in your life. You well, know? I mean, it's, let's face it, in this world, um, 
corporate sponsorship is inevitable. Yeah. You know, that's where the money is. That's that's yeah. where the money comes from to support modern day skateboarding. Yeah. Uh, but there's a difference, in my view, between corporate sponsorship and corporate ownership. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have to be careful how I <laughs> how I speak because in the position that I'm in, you know, I can't ever say no to a check to help us develop events and develop, you know, the the development side of skateboarding, um, whether it's competition or whatever, but uh, it seems that you know a lot of these new corporations that are coming into it, they want to own it, and it's not about ownership. You know what I mean? Skews on the wall doesn't mean you own it. You know, but when you're a corporate guy pushing paper, you know. You want to push the most paper. Sure. Well, I mean, a, a lot of them do. You know, Nike put in forty million dollars last year into skateboarding. They killed other programs that they had under, you know, underneath their brand to put that money into the skate end of it. You know, because they see a return, right? I mean, I, I live in a country of three hundred thirty million people, mm -hmm. and more kids ride a skateboard than play baseball. Yep. It's just demographics. You yep. know what I mean? So if you invest in that, hopefully you're going to get that return. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, now, how you go about it, you know, <laughs> how you go about it could either be good or bad, you know what I mean? And I mean, some people look at, well, look what they've done, $40 million for skateboarding, but there's some of us that go, yeah, but you're squeezing out all the endemics that built skateboarding for you, built that platform for you to now come in and, I don't want to use the word rape us, but you know what I mean? It's Sometimes it's how it feels like if I was a shop owner or I was a small skate company owner, you know, and I'm, I'm just being forced out of the market because I can't compete with these multinational corporate entity that, you know, makes shoes at pennies on the dollar, you know. I mean, look, I don't want to talk bad about it, but that's just, that is just kind of the way it is, you know, and you, like I said, you either make friends with it or, or you don't. So, well, I, I live in Southern California, which is technically a desert, and if we didn't steal the water from Colorado and Northern California, I'd still be living in a desert, but you go outside my front door and everybody's got a manicured lawn and a beautiful landscaping and ch -ch 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 sprinklers going off in, in, you know, high summer when that water could be going to, like you say, growing food and Giving, giving that water to the farmers in, in the Joaquin, central Joaquin Valley to, you know, grow food for us. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it is. I guess it is what it is, right? He says that Red Bull is a great uh, sponsor, but one thing that he, he dislikes is when they're out at a camera, sh or they're doing a shoot, and they, they say, they sort of treat him like a monkey, do this trick a hundred mm -hmm. times, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's, you know what, though, I mean, if, if you want that check, that's the hoops that you, you know, if, if, if you want that check and, you know, you sign the contract, mm -hmm. that's the parameters that you got to work under. You know what I mean? And, and in, in that respect, the soul of skateboarding is gone, you know, but that money helps keep him going in the direction that he wants to go in, which is pushing the bubble, bettering, you know, his skating. Painting a more uh, beautiful photo, painting. But I also, I also see how the Brazilians themselves, um, I don't know whether it's part of their culture, but they tend to share a lot of the wealth. And well, they're very passionate people and um, they're very communal people. You know, um, Latin America, my mother's from Argentina, you know, and, and I was brought up that sharing is caring, you know what I mean? Sharing with your brother is more important than hoarding, you know, and in America, I, I, I'm sorry to say that the kids aren't raised to be sharing and caring, you know, it's a me, myself, and I culture. Absolutely. Same as Australia. And, and, well, because well, Australia's in bed with America, so I totally see that happening, you know, but yeah, it's, it's a me, myself, and I culture, and, uh, you know, because it's the land of plenty, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, a country like Brazil... You know, we complain about the 1% and the 99% socioeconomically in, in the West, but it's even greater in a country like Brazil. You know, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's more of a sharing society, definitely. Something hits me right there. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I was brought up that we're all brothers from different mothers. It's not about race, color, religion, creed. I mean, we live on a finite marble. Mm -hmm. You know, and now this finite marble is, is in serious jeopardy and 
we need to start thinking more about being humans together humans as opposed to being you know this color that color like i said race creed whatever it's that's we're far beyond that now you know but the powers that be want to make you think about that because that's how they make their money at the end of the day you know that's how they keep the war machine going that's how they it's how monsanto's you know is slowly poisoning our kids to keep the whole you know keep people sick and keep the keep that economy going you know those trillion dollar economies you know when really there's simple fixes there's there's simple societal fixes that if we ingrain that in our kids if we use social media actually the way i think it should be used as opposed to you know concrete our narcissism um then we could invoke more social change you know what i mean and i think that skateboarders somehow a good majority of them um are able to see beyond that you know what i mean and still share that that brotherhood well you know it's funny. brothers from different mothers it's funny you bring bring that up because uh as i mentioned the, the other circles that i've traveled around um i found that skateboarders are probably some of the smartest sports people out there i mean i came yeah from- almost like being an idiot savant you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I say I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way but you know, yes, yeah, some I know a lot of skateboarders that are they're geniuses. You know, they, they they truly are geniuses. You know, they can't keep it turned on all the time, but when they're shining, they're really shining. You know, because skateboarding is not an easy thing. You know, I mean, the average kid just can't pick up a skateboard and, and rip. You know, yeah, you can roll down the street, whatever, but to really be somebody that looks like a natural, that really is fluid, skates like liquid. That's not something that you just learn overnight, you know what I mean? You may never learn it. You can be a learned skateboarder and you can do tricks, but you may not look natural on a skateboard, you know? And that's the difference between the really gifted and, you know, your average skateboarder. My involvement with Zyke Ice, they were like, oh yeah, that's straight onto it, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, no, I, I've been on that whole movement for a long time and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher when it comes to that, you know what I mean? Because that's just, that movement's just a way to, open people's eyes to really what the truth is and what's going on. Yeah, you know? but I, I've got to be it's a bit honest. extreme in some points, yep. you know, and, and I'll, I'll admit that, but, you know, pe- my grandmother, I, when my grandmother passed away at my grandmother's memorial, I, I remember, see you Benny, take care brother. Uh, you know, the pastor said that, you know, people don't like to hear the truth because generally the truth isn't what they want to hear. You know, and a movement like the Zeitgeist movement puts the truth so much in your face that that's why a lot of people just, they go, I can't deal with that. Yep. You know, yep, but, that happens. but the truth is the truth. You know what I mean? Evidence is evidence. Truth is truth. Yep. Science is science. You know, you either, you either, you either believe or don't. Yeah. Um, and as, I- as do a lot of people that have created something and, you know think that they have something that's maybe not elitist, but it's a viable brand and, and it can be a money maker. It can yeah. all of a sudden generate money, you know, and money's kind of like the root of all evil. You know, once people see the dollars in front of them, they change. There's very few people that I, you know, I've known over the years that money hasn't changed them in one way or another. You know, I, people, people just change. Again, uh, you know, it's not always about money, you know what I mean? Fa- family is always much more important than money, you know. In the West, we're just taught that if you don't have money, you're nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I know when I go to, and I've done skateboarding events and demos and traveled around the world, you know, and first world countries, second world countries, third world countries, fourth world countries, you know. And I find that when I get to like the third world, those people are a lot happier in general day to day than those of us that supposedly live in the first world where everything's there for us and it's all provided for us. Um, those people aren't very happy. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're always worried about something superficial. They tend to pretend, pretend to be happy. Yeah, well, because that's the facade. That's that's the facade that that money affords you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a facade at the end of the day, you know. True happiness is, can you live with yourself in the moment? And that's where skateboarding sort of uh, 
turns that on. Well, yeah, because you, you, like I said, there are no rules. You're, 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 it's almost like you're in command of your own lucid dream, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're able to channel your thoughts to this creative art form. You know, it, it, it just takes you away and it's your own sense, it's your own bubble, mm -hmm. so to speak. You know what I mean? And, and there's very few things that allow you to do that. Surfing allows you to do that. Surfing's one of those, uh, one of those things, you know. Yep. Um, but there's very few, you know, I would say snowboarding, you know, but snowboarding's not as easily accessible as the water and as yep. skateboarding, you know. I, I mean, I can go out my front door and I can skate all day. Mm -hmm. Whereas, unless I live in the mountain and I have lots of money and I can afford a lift ticket or a, a snowmobile and somebody take me up to the top of the hill, you know. Uh, it's well, not in Alaska or something. exactly, but then you still got to get to the top of the hill. <laughs> so um, it, it's it's just different, you know. The surfing, skating, it, it's it's really it's its own kind of genre of art. You know what I mean? That takes you to any place you want to be. So as a as a kid, when you were uh, first learning to skate, what was the thing that turned you on the most? That, Really got you there. Is that too much for hanging around while you're talking? Uh, yeah, probably we'd rather do it in oh, private. Yeah. yeah. The coping is gone, and you're talking about replacing the whole lot of these tiles for forty thousand dollars. Wouldn't it be better though, having you know the hollow tube that they have when they make the half pipes? No. It's got to be got to no. A pipe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Strange guy. Yeah, I, I used to ride Nikes. You know what I mean? When we, when, when, before there were quote skate shoes. I mean, well, there was Vans. There was always Vans. Hobie shoes went away. Uh, I, I think there was another brand. I mean, I was so young back then, but I do remember Hobie shoes. I remember having a pair of Hobie shoes, and then they went away, and then it was Vans. And you know, Vans were so bloody expensive that you couldn't. I mean, even back then, this is like you know, early '80s, something like that, '81, '82. Fans were so expensive that you couldn't you couldn't afford them. You know what I mean. So we started skating in, in Chuck Taylor, Converse. You know, and we'd buy blemished ones because they were a third of the price of the ones that weren't blemished. You know, and they said blemished on the insole and stuff, but you didn't care because you know in two weeks they'd be gone anyway. You know, and and then and then Nike came out with the Air Jordan, and it was like wow, you know that, and then the Converse, Converse All Star, the leather ones that. Uh, can't remember, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I think, used to wear them and stuff. And this was like, you know, mid-80s and, and 83, 84. And yeah, I mean, Nike's been around forever in skateboarding, you know, and they've tried to come in and out a few times, failed kind of miserably a few times. But this last time round, they, they got it right, you know what I mean? And now they're squeezing everyone else out, mm -hmm. you know, the big corporation coming in and squeezing everyone out, mm -hmm. you know? And there's a few people on their gravy train, and. You know, they deserve, I'm not going to mention names, but those people deserve to get paid, mm -hmm. for sure, because they laid the foundation for a lot of skateboarders, you know? But at the same time, what does that do for everybody else? You know what I mean? It's, well, you know, it's the rich get richer kind of thing. Yeah, but again, there's a lot of us, though. There's, yeah, there's, 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 there's a, a lot of us that, you know, I mean, it, we're just one of many that are out there, you know, promoting not just bowl skating, but just trying to promote skateboarding in a, in a positive, positive way. You, you know what I mean? It's something that we've loved to do forever. And if you can empower a kid to come out here and become a great artist, um, you know, you've done the right, you've, you've done good, I guess. You know what I mean? You've, you've, you've helped a kid kind of become somebody that maybe he wouldn't have, you know, become. Yeah. Well, I'm just, well, like I said, it's part of it. It's not a question of if you mm -hmm. fall, it's when you fall. Mm -hmm. And again, how you deal with that process of mm -hmm. failure. Because, you know, that's really, I, I, I think a lot of, you know, what we're talking about is, you know, when you get knocked down, how do you deal with the failure of it? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, some individuals have no problem dealing with the failure. Others have a hard time with it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not easy. Nothing in life is easy. And when you fail, you got to deal with that mental, spiritual anguish of the failure, and how do you turn that into a positive? How do you how do you channel that negativity into positivity? 
and it's, it's surprising that although that happens and for some people that will manifest manifest in other areas of their life uh, for in business for example they, they fail in business so they try again uh, but then there's uh, there's the other side of it too that you see where things that shouldn't happen do or when things that should happen don't you can open a door to a cascade of all sorts of detrimental human behaviors um, but yet I find a lot of people a lot of skateboarders deal with that just by getting out on their board on their own by themselves yeah yeah uh, you found that yourself yeah yeah I uh it's kind of funny, you know, when, I, when I'm traveling and I'm out doing events and stuff, I'm with a lot of people. There's always constantly people ar around me. But where I, when I'm home, um, I don't want to say that I'm a loner, but I enjoy just kind of skating without all this out here. You know, because that helps me get back into like why I started skateboarding. The feeling that I got. Because at the end of the day, it's that feeling that it gives you. It's not the reward or the prize, the trophy or, you know, but just the personal challenge of testing yourself and overcoming failure. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, you, it's dealing with failure. Because not every, like I said, not everybody gets on the board and rips straight away and does 540s and looks fluid and, you know, looks like a natural skateboarder. It's some it takes work, some it's easier than others, but everyone f fails along the way. And it's how you deal with those little failures along the way. So yeah, when I'm home, I, um, I like to just kind of be by myself. I like to skate by myself. I'll, I'll go skate with, with the friends, but I like that alone time. I like that alone. I think that's kind of why I got into mountain biking too. You know, I just, just like to be out in the middle of nowhere, you know, jumping tabletops, jumping down cliffs, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, I don't know. You're an adrenaline junkie. From I, mean, I am. I'm an adrenaline junkie. I still am to this day. You know, I've mellowed out quite a bit. You know, especially with my skating, just because of all the injuries and stuff. And I've been fortunate. You know, that I mean, I know guys that have been way more injured. You know what I mean? In, in their careers. But yeah, you know, you just you just deal with it day by day. And you know, like I said, for this year, it's been really hard for me with the shoulder. It's finally, finally, almost there. You know. Did a couple eggplants and a couple frontside inverts on this trip, so it's getting there, you know. Uh, I don't have to wear my man bra like I used to have to wear, you know, to keep it in. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, skateboarding is um, skateboarding is definitely something that I, I think brings a lot of people together. There is that brother and sisterhood, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of really amazing girls who skateboard now too. You know, it was always a, a man's kind of thing, but now it's it's kind of gone to both sexes, you know, Lizzie Armanto is a good example of that, you know, she's such a great ambassador for all the girl skateboarders, um, but it is a brother-sisterhood kind of thing, you know, um, there's the competition end of it, you know, and some really take that to heart, but I think the majority, it goes back to the, to the feeling that it gives you, you know what I mean, and, and that's, I guess, what just keeps me in it. You know what I mean? If I can help somebody learn to know what that feels like, you know, then I, I think I'm doing all right. Everywhere is definitely different. Mm -hmm. Different languages, different cultures, you know what I mean? But when we do an event in Marseille, it's that same brotherly love. Like I said, there's maybe different, different language, culture might be different, but at the end of the day, skateboarders are brothers from different mothers, you know? You know, same thing with Czech Republic where we do events, same thing in China, same thing in Thailand, you know what I mean? It's At the end of the day, that little wooden toy that used to be called a toy, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it's the glue that brings people together to enjoy that common feeling. Uh, again, it goes back to the feeling that it gives you, you know what I mean? And I know people that can't even speak the same language that... Uh, almost have to sign language with each other but when they're skateboarding they understand each other yeah you know so like the, even... the language of skateboard transcends any spoken language or any culture it's mm -hmm. you know uh, I mean they might be the, the I think we have competition because the people that are trying to make money in skateboarding need to have some kind of a 
placing or a result to tag their guys to, you, you know. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, that's a well, it, well. I wouldn't say that. I mean, well, you know, there's a lot of dudes that come out here, dude. And if you're here on a Thursday, the day before the contest, there's 40 hungry dudes jockeying because they want to be the yeah. best on the day. So yeah, and the camaraderie. You know, yeah. a lot of guys. Yeah, I I know guys that live literally 20 miles from me, 30k from my house. Mm -hmm. We don't see each other all year, except when we're at an event mm -hmm. somewhere else on the globe. Because mm -hmm. when we're home, we have our lives, we're doing our thing, you know what I mean, for whatever reason, and we may not get a chance to skate together at home, mm -hmm. but we but we skate together here. We, we, we travel 7,000 miles across the ocean to be brothers here, you know? So, uh, yeah, skateboarding is a very, uh, it's a very strange thing. <laughs> a strangely good thing. So no, it was no longer a viable investment for them? Mm -hmm. um, or, or it wasn't... That government body wasn't going in the direction that they want to take yeah. it. Um, you know what I mean? That was the other thing I was going to say. Like in Mexico. Are you aware of what happened with Mexico? Yeah. In Mexico? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But that's the influence that a multi national corporation has. Mm -hmm. They have that much influence, you know what I mean? And, and in some ways, I think that that's detrimental to something like skateboarding because I, I started skateboarding because I didn't want to be part of, quote, the team. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be part of this structured and organized thing. You know, skateboarding meant anarchy. Skateboarding meant my own release from the world, you know, when everything around you is shit, you can go get on your board and everything's all right, you know, and, and not to say that the people that, you know, represent those multinational corporations don't think the same, but at the end of the day, it, it doesn't seem to work out that way. Well, what I think, what I tend to think that the, the uh, executives of the corporations haven't learned yet, that nobody owns skateboarding. Nobody can own skateboarding. Nobody can own skateboarding. That's it. Nobody can. Nobody can own art. Yep, you can own an event. Point. You can own a company that provides product for the kids to use, but you can't own the action. You can't own the art. At the end of the day, you know That's what I mean. You you can't take that That's from anybody. Crucial. That's the crucial thing that they're missing. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, but they're they're coming close to tricking the world that that they do get it for sure they do and they own a huge part of it now you know what i mean you go into a local mom and pop skate yeah. shop and you look at the shoe skews on the wall mm -hmm. two-thirds are a nike brand you know what i mean nike branded i mean what is that but what does that say for the health of the rest of the industry you got to have competition you can't just be the sole brand, you know what I mean? Those, there's got to be other brands out there to make competition. Competition makes for a healthy market. Mm -hmm. One, you know, one dominant brand doesn't make for a healthy economy. Doesn't make for for uh, doesn't make a healthy environment. You know, it's like a monoculture in in growing food. You know, we 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 know that a monoculture isn't healthy. For a lot of reasons, you know, and, and I look at, I hate to say it, I look at them as kind of being like the monoculture of of the hard goods, you know. They're forcing a lot of companies to go belly up, mm -hmm. and that's not healthy. That's, you know, that's, uh, well, that's, what I that's Orwellian thought. It's been pop culture, actually, I, I reckon, for a long time, because if you look at streetwear and you look at, you know, Skateboarders have influenced youth culture since the early 80s. Yep, yep. Since has. the Vision Streetwear days, yeah. you know what I mean? They, skateboarding has influenced urban and street culture. Maybe in the 70s and the mid 80s, you had uh, skateboarding being shown in the TVs, and um, you know, but there was a long gap there that it wasn't yeah. ever. There was no product placement or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, then all of a sudden, you've got people like. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, forget his name because every time I look at it, I want to forget it. Now I'm trying to remember it. Uh, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, as soon uh, as I saw him 
getting a skateboard and doing his little thing and just throwing it up on YouTube. And um, I realised that to, he wouldn't have picked up the skateboard on his own and just done that. If he would have, yeah. then he would have been—he would have done it years ago, just sure. like we all did. Sure. So somebody's told him. You can use that as a marketing tool. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. when he's going to, you know. And, and I, just so you know, Justin Bieber, we really. You can be you, but you'll never be a skateboarder. I'll tell you that right now. Well, dude, you know, um, but seeing that and understanding where it comes from, the background of that, yeah. Um, yeah. just like you said, yeah. you know, you came from well, a humble beginning. And I think skateboarding, too, is, is so part of the masses now. You know what I mean? There's a Danny Way, a Tony Hawk, an Eric Costin, and a Ryan Sheckler in every town. And some become superstars and some don't. But that talent pool now is so wide. Mm -hmm. And there's so many amazing skateboarders now that you're either part of the clique and you get in with it or you're not. You know, it's, and that's always been the thing, you know, that some people are marketable, some aren't. You know, I, I've known some of the best skateboarders in the world, but somehow the industry didn't deem them marketable. So they got. Not blacklisted, but backdoored. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still allowed to participate, they're mm -hmm. still allowed to be there, but in terms of getting a piece of the pie, that economic piece of the pie, yep. they've been backdoored. And that's something that I'm, you know? I'm looking at, and that's something that I realized that was happening to RJ, for example. Well, and look at Adam Hadick, you yeah, know what I mean? Well. I mean, Hadick's one of those skaters, he's a skater skater. And in some ways, you know, you either deal with the bullshit put your tail between your legs and hopefully it happens or you're just you've been chosen some people just get chosen you know what I mean and obviously he, he didn't get chosen but he still chooses to participate and be a skater skater you know um, but yeah like I said you either you're either in the click or you're not you know I've never been in the click my whole life I've been I've been a blue-collar skateboarder my whole life you know if I knew that I had a bag groceries as a kid to buy my ticket to the championships in Munster because that always used to be the pilgrimage you know when I was younger that the world championships for 20 years was in Germany I bagged groceries to get to Germany that's what I had to do you know um, but again it's people like you who have come from that? Like, no, it's the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, again, you know, I mean, we have we have some sponsors. They subsidize a little bit, a little bit here, there. You know what I mean? But it's never enough to live the luxurious life. <laughs> you know, there it isn't five star hotels, and it isn't you know. I stay in a room that's got cockroaches in it, and I'm and I'm stoked because it's a free room. You know what I mean? And it it affords us to be here. But I think that's what keeps you honest. Well, I mean. It's all you can be at the end of the day. You're only responsible for your own actions in this world, you know what I mean? And you can be a bullshitter or you can be true, you know, so. And you are true to heart. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the interview. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. It's been my great. Pleasure. And also been great to be able to just shoot the shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, skateboarding's, you know, bigger than events. Skateboarding is bigger than, you know, what you see in the magazines. It's bigger than an industry. It's, uh... Again, it's that art form. It's that. Uh, it's that un. It's that un. Um, it's it's unlimited in its scope of you know what it provides for the participant. You know the artist. You know and and again I I will always until they put me in a pine box look at skateboarding as an art form and not a sport. It's only a sport because it's athlet. It's has athleticism. You know. Um, your body has to manipulate certain things, but to me, it's it'll always be an art form. So, yep, I'd agree. Yeah. I'd agree, and I yeah. think that uh, some of the most ingenious skateboarders out there, some of the best artists, um, they're just creative. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely creative. Yeah, not every artist dies rich, right? Yeah. Just, well, if you study art history, look at you know a lot of the world's greatest artists. When people look back and go, wow, he was one of the world's greatest artist well he committed suicide because he was poor he died with 10 bucks in his pocket you know what I mean all of his shit got stolen and he died poor so you know again at the end of the day as long as it fulfills you and 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 keeps you positive and going in the right direction then skateboarding can be fulfilling to you Skate for nothing, but love, love yeah that's it that's it, that's it.
And I meant that what I said, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks,